So welcome to my home. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. Um, I I always say that I'm excited, you know, this is very exciting, exciting to meet you. Um, but I know the other person that is always sitting across from me is here because they've lost a loved one. So I wish you both the most amazing and beautiful messages from your loved ones today. Thank you. Uh, okay, so um actually I'm actually gonna start with the dad that is departed. Your dad? And her dad. Both of them. So know that they step forward. They're together. They're together on the other side because they are connected to you. Your dad made me feel like you have like either his necklace or like a piece of his jewelry. Uh, I have his school ring. <laughs> Your dad's making me feel like it was just more than just a ring, Teresa. It symbolized so much of <laughs> who I was, what I was able to accomplish in my life here in the physical world. It was, it was something that he was proud of. My dad was a very smart businessman, uh, went to pace for, uh, for business. He was very successful in the banking industry and he had a, the heart of gold and would do anything for anybody. I looked at your dad and he said, Teresa, I was not there for majority of my son's life. And I need my son to know that I have always been there for him. Do you understand that? I do. And he's showing me that when your dad first died, you went into this mode where you had to step up and take care of everyone and make sure everyone was okay, right? I was, I was 17 at the time. And he has these scars and this pain that he carries disappointment and anger, and you have every right to feel those things. But we have to love ourselves more than that. And there were some things that you had to, uh, how do I say this, dissolve or uh, maybe let go of? Mm -hmm. Know that he supports you in those decisions. Yeah, he owned a lot of real estate and uh, I was too young to take care of him. So I had no choice but to sell it. Yeah, I regret it. He says, no regrets, and I support every single decision. He says, and I need my son to know that I am extremely proud of the man that he has become and that I do know of the life that he has made. When he passed, it was shocking. It was rough for a 17-year-old to, to handle. So I've always struggled because not having that father figure there, I always had to be that person that took care of myself. And I needed to hear that my father was proud of me and that he feels in his heart I made the right decisions. Whose father lost the child? <laughs> It's her dad. She lost her sister. So know that his father brought forward your sister. <sighs> Just know that her soul is at peace and that she says, I'm sorry, I left too soon. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's fine. <sighs> My sister, her name was Angela. She was born on December 22nd in 1983. She tragically passed um, March 17th of 1985. What do you, do you have something in the car we, of your sister's? So I have the key to her mausoleum. She just, was your sister very funny? So or very I, feisty? Very, Because she yes. went, huh, I got a mausoleum. Yep. <laughs> we were the first mausoleum in St. Raymond Cemetery. How do you connect with the number 17? So 17 could be in the 17th of a month. It's my son's birthday. And it's also the day she died. Okay. The day that she died, the same day 
the same hospital almost to the same minute our son was born. Was born. 31 years apart. She says he wasn't supposed to live. And she says, when your son was placed in your arms, you felt me. Yeah. You knew that your son was a gift from me. <laughs> she said, because losing a child, my sister never would have recovered. <laughs> he came too early. Okay. He came too early. And he came out screaming. And they were like shocked. They're like, why is he, he's not, she's, he's 20, you're delivering at 30 weeks. He should not be because screaming. Because your sister transitioned her soul through to your son. Oh my God. Oh, baby. When I was 25 weeks pregnant, we were moving and I was just lifting too heavy of stuff and I ended up being rushed to the hospital. And on March 17th, they were like, that's it, he's coming. They had two NICU teams, they had the labor and delivery team, they had 30 people in the operating room and without any medications, he came out. He came out screaming. Now, did your sister pass suddenly, unexpected, and tragically? Because she makes me feel like this was a freak thing that happened. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. And she keeps saying to me, my sister is so angry that I died. She can't get past the anger. She said, because the day that I died, I took a part of mom with me. <laughs> we had a pizzeria up in Orange County, New York, and she walked out the back of the store. She was hit by a car. She was two years old. When she died, I was kind of pushed off to the side. My mother discarded me. She wanted nothing to do with me. She did not know how to be a mother anymore. I spent a lot of time with my aunts and my cousins. I couldn't live my own life. I, everything I did, I, I had to do for the two of us. Your sister says, I am sorry. <laughs> she says, but this pain that you carry has to end here. It was not your fault. 